G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're focusing on door to and from data in Revit, and in particular, we're going to be focusing on how to use uh, Dynamo in order to take advantage of this data. So, what is door to from? Um, so, if people don't know what it is, it's essentially this. So, if you can imagine walking through a door, um, no matter which way the door is swinging, the direction that you're moving through that door is in the direction of to from the direction of from. So we use this system typically in order to communicate on schedules and sometimes drawings, uh, which uh, rooms doors belong to. And it's not always necessarily in the direction of swing. Um, depending on the firm you work for, it may vary. It might be if you go into a dead end room, the door is always going to be two um, into the room. So it just depends on your company. In Revit, you can access this data in door schedules. So there's some additional tabs that appear in the door schedules uh, called to room and from room. And essentially you can pull any value out of the, the rooms that the door is adjacent to. And again, it can be in the direction of swing or vice versa, um, unless you're using reporting points in your families, in which case it will always be in the direction of the from and to reporting point locations. Um, but there's some issues with this. Uh, so one thing that most people will notice quite early when they're working with this is that these parameters aren't available in many places. You can't see them in the properties of a door when you select it. And likewise, you can't get it in a tag either. So we run into a few problems if we ever want to take advantage of this data. Um, so why do we want it? I guess is why a lot of people ask me, or what a lot of people ask me. One thing is that sometimes you want to put the, the room that the door belongs to in its mark or its identifying number. And Dynamo can be a great tool in order to pull out this data and set the mark of the door. Um, likewise, you might just want it to be in the door um, so you can review uh, without having to go to the door schedule constantly to check the value. Uh, and also on top of that, the third thing is that sometimes people like to put this in a tag on very complex projects where it may not be obvious which rooms a door belongs to. So we're going to look at two things today. We're going to look at Revit and we're going to look at Dynamo. So we're very briefly going to look in Revit about how to add a shared parameter that will host some data that we're going to move using Dynamo out of the two from values. And then I'm just going to quickly show you how to create a door tag in order to access these parameters in uh, the tagged values. But then we're going to move on to Dynamo quite quickly. Um, so we're going to look at a three part workflow. For, so three little scripts. The first one's going to select all the doors in the active view because um, that can be quite timely to do. Um, and then the second part we're going to do is we're going to populate those shared parameters using Dynamo by interrogating the values of to and from. And from there, we're going to highlight any doors that have a missing to or from because typically this can indicate that a door may have an error. The most common error is that typically sometimes the room may be sitting higher than the door's reporting point, um, which is typically a modeling error. So this can be quite common. Um, and I guess the future goal beyond this video, so in my next video, I'm going to show you how to create a toolbar using these three scripts. So it's a pretty exciting video. Um, I think it's going to you know, go down really well with the community. It's actually something I've just found recently that's really unlocked um, a whole new way of looking at Dynamo in Revit and may bypass the need to build plugins ever. So very exciting. So we're going to be using some custom nodes today. We're going to be using two nodes for selection from spring nodes. So select in Revit and then collect the current active selection. Uh, from there, we're going to look at two nodes in clockwork as well. So we're going to get the two room and the from room value. And we're also going to replace some nulls using those custom nodes. Um, I'm going to be using version 2.0.3, but I believe that most versions of Dynamo should work this way. I've built this sort of script in version 1, um, and I believe that these nodes are all around in 2.1 as well. Um, but without, without further ado, let's get started. I've, I've been speaking too long. So I'm just in the Autodesk sample project, so you can also work in this project if you like, if you want to follow along. Um, this is the advanced architectural project. So if I just select one of my doors, um, you'll notice that we can't see to or from. What I'll briefly do is just show you how you can manipulate the reporting point of a door um, so that every single instance of the family always reports the same way. So if you go to edit family, there's an option called room calculation point. And if you turn that on, you'll get these two arrows and you'll see the direction they're moving. So this area head is your from, and this area head is, uh, sorry, this area head is your from, this one is your two. So you're moving in the direction of the arrow. So wherever you put these reporting points is where your door will report its to and its from room from. So you always want to make sure that your room is going to be in this location, which isn't always easy to do. So I typically recommend steering clear of this unless you literally always 
uh, report your door in the direction of swing um, with no exceptions to the rule. Uh, I know a lot of firms, they try this and then eventually they find out, oh, we've got a door on the outside of the building. We actually want it to report in even though it's swinging out. And the only solution they have is to go and create a copy of the family with the opposite to from reporting, which is highly inefficient. I don't recommend it. So typically it's better to alternate the twos and the froms in Revit door schedules. Okay, so I'll just jump in the door schedule and show you how you can access these parameters as well. So if you go to fields and a door schedule, you just drop this down and essentially you get to interrogate the properties of the to and the from. So let's just add room number for the from and room number for the to. So what we should get is two columns with the number of the room. Let's have a look at this one here. So we're going from room 102 to 101. If I drop this down, I can flip the direction of my two from. And note that this will also automatically swap my two. Um, so this is something that Revit does for us automatically. So when we're auditing our twos and our froms, this is going to be quite handy um, in a door schedule to tell the door which room it really belongs to. Because typically you'll report the door in a schedule for its two room, so which room it's going into. That's typically the room it will belong to. Okay, so let's add some shared parameters to our project. So what we're going to do is go to Manage, Project Parameters. And we'll just cancel that. So what we want to do is add two project parameters. I'll just go to add and we're going to make these shared parameters so we can put them in tags. I'm just going to go to select to pick my shared parameter file and I don't have one currently. I'm just going to create a new one and I'll just call this shared parameters sample. I'm going to create a parameter group first and let's just call this doors and I'll create a parameter first. So I'll just do abg for Aussie BIM Guru underscore doors underscore two. And I'll make this a text parameter. You could make it a number parameter, but I find that it's better to do text because text can support numbers and characters, um, whereas numbers can only support numbers. So we're just going to have a two and a from text field. So we'll OK that. And let's just pick our from field first. You can put it under any parameter group you like. I'll just leave it under text. It's important to allow your values to vary by group instance. So if you have a door in a group, you're gonna want this parameter to be flexible because you're gonna have different rooms that those doors go into from the same copies of that group. We're gonna apply our parameter to doors as well. And I'm also just gonna quickly add my two parameter in the same way. So shared parameter, select two. And this will be a Dynamo tutorial soon, don't worry. If you know what I'm doing, um, feel free to jump ahead five, 10 minutes. If you know how this works, probably about five minutes. And then we've got to and from. So now every door in our project should have two new parameters at an instance level. And you can see them here in from and to. So let's just say manually here, we'll just type this in. So we're gonna go into room 121. So our two is 121 and our from is 102. Obviously I've just done something manual there. So already there's an opportunity for Dynamo to automate that. If you ever do something manual and it's very easy to figure out how to do it, Dynamo can probably do it for you. Let's just build a quick tag so we can show those two values. This isn't common. Typically you wouldn't use the door tag that shows to and from, um, but I'm just showing that it's possible. So we're gonna create a generic tag. And what we'll do is just go into its family category and parameters, and we'll make this a door tag. Door tags. Cool. And I'm just going to add a label. So I'll go to create label and let's just make this a little bit smaller. I'll just make it two millimeters and I'll make it centric. And because we've made two shared parameters, note that you can't see to room or from room. So we're going to add our two shared parameters. So again, in the same way, we're going to add it and we'll also add our two room. Let's add, uh, let's add a prefix. So we'll add a break between them, so a new line. And I'll prefix this with from space and to space. And essentially this will give us a to from for any door that we put it on. So I'll just load this into my project. Um, I'll just save it first. Uh, door tag to from. And then if I tag this door here, you'll see that I can see my from and my to. 
but note that it's just being driven by these shared parameters. So if these change and there's a mistake, um, it will be a mistake. It won't automatically correct itself. So we can look at using Dynamo to automate some of this data so that we don't have to worry about even thinking about it. So that's pretty much the Revit component of the demonstration done. Now we're gonna jump into Dynamo. So the first script that we're gonna build is gonna select all of our doors in our active view because the easiest way for us to gain a selection of doors to push these parameters from is actually to build a script that reads our active selection. That way we don't have to do all the doors in our view if we don't want to. The user can select just a couple of them, for example. This is all gonna, all gonna tie in as well to the toolbar that we're building in the next video that I make. So that's why I'm picking selection instead of something uh, more like grabbing all the doors in a view. So I'm just gonna jump into Dynamo in a new script. And we're just gonna begin uh, in this case by getting all elements in active view. Uh, so depending on your project, maybe this isn't always the best way for you to collect elements because you may have a lot of elements in your view. It's up to you. Um, so we'll just run this and we should get a whole bunch of elements. We'll get windows, doors, walls, floors. In, the case, in this case, we have 1.3 thousand elements. Of these elements, we're gonna get their category. So we're gonna get the get category node. And we wanna find out which one of these are doors. At the moment, the output is category. So we wanna turn this into a string with string from object. And this is so we can compare it against the word doors. So we're gonna use an equals node in this case. And we're gonna check if this string equals the string doors. So we'll get a string node. And essentially we should end up with a list of trues and falses as to whether the category of the element is doors. So let's go and find the first occurrence of true. And in this case, it's at 93. So if we go and check what's, what this element is at index 93, we should expect to find a door. And of course we do. Um, so there we go. So what we're gonna do now is just use one of my favorite nodes, which is filter by Boolean mask. And as most of you probably know, this takes a list of elements and we'll split them up into true or false outcomes. So we should expect all our true outcomes to be doors. So our in list will be all of our doors and our out list will be the rest. So now we can just proceed with our doors. What we're gonna do now is just create a list. This is so we can feed in a list to our create selection node. So I'm just gonna get a select in Revit node from Springs. So we'll get our select in Revit node. And if you're ever not sure which selection node or any node that has a name as, as one another, another package. I'm pretty sure all packages, you can type in the name of the package and that will limit it to the ones that belong to that particular package. So you'll, you'll see there I searched for string for springs as well as select in Revit and then it limited what I saw. There is a node here to, to reset um, this selection. And in this case, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be running it from Dynamo Player anyway. But if we run this script, so I'll just, put this to the side of Revit. And in our active view, which is a floor plan, if we run it, the script should select all the doors in our view, which it has in this case. So now we can take this selection in part two and apply it to the next script, which will take the values of two from and put them back into those shared parameters we've created. So this is this first part done. I'm gonna go into part two, um, which is a new script again. And in this case, we're gonna begin with current selection. So we're gonna get a collect current selection from springs in this case. And I'm just gonna run this immediately while I've still got my selection. And now we'll get our 38 doors that have been selected in the previous part of the script. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the door rooms node from clockwork. It's really easy to find clockwork nodes because they have a cog next to them. Um, so we're gonna feed in all of these doors you can always pass in the phase um, or you can get the phase of the active view that you're in. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave the phase field alone so that it finds the first phase that this door belongs to. That's the way I think this node's been built um, by the creator of the package. So it's quite an effect effective and a trouble-proof node in how it's been built. Uh, what we're gonna do now is just get the number of these rooms because our output here should be the from room and the two room. I'll just try to get that, get that out of my way. Let's see if I can get rid of that, it's sort of blocking my view. 
I may just um, close the script. It looks like Dynamo. It's got that in the way. What I'll do is quickly reboot Dynamo. Sometimes there's some graphic anomalies in Dynamo where parts of the user interface don't go away. Um, I think that's because of attention being distracted from the program and it doesn't have a chance to finish the transaction of showing you that part of the user interface. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen from time to time. Usually when it happens, the only way to get rid of it is to reboot Dynamo, unfortunately. Um, so just bear with me, should be open soon. Cool, so we'll just jump back into our script. Cool. And we're gonna get the number of our from room and also of our to room. I might just cross check that I have Yes, I still have my door selected, great. So now I'll just run the script and this should give us a list of numbers. But you'll notice we're getting a warning. So the reason that we're getting a warning in some cases is that every now and then there's a door that doesn't have a from or a to room, in which case the node outputs a null. So it outputs no values. We're gonna let those warnings stay in our script. Um, you could always modify the door.rooms node to change what is output when no match is found. But in this case, it just outputs a null, which is a little bit unfortunate because it's not always good to have warnings in scripts because people assume that something's went wrong. In this case, nothing has went wrong technically. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a list of replace nulls from Clockwork. And we're gonna be replacing the nulls in both of these number lists. And what we're gonna replace them with is a string. Note that the number is coming out as a string as well. We're going to replace the nulls with just the phrase no room so that the user can see after this script runs that the rooms that well the, the 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 doors that don't have a from or a to it still tells them which ones don't have this so now we should get a list where all our nulls are replaced by no room and everything else is the same so we can use these values to essentially set the parameters of our of our doors from the start so i'll just move these sort of down a bit and I'm going to get a set parameter value by name node. So we're going to get set parameter by name. And of our original doors, we're going to be setting those to and those from shared parameters that we created. So I'll just get a string. So we're going to set our from. So abg underscore door underscore from for our parameter name. And our values in this case will be our list with our replaced nulls. We also want to do our two as well. So in this case, our values will be from our bottom, bottom pathway. And we'll just feed in the parameter name as abg door two. Cool. And essentially what should happen now is that all of these values should be run, should be populated by the script. So I'm just going to run this script. Okay, so we're back to run the script. Um, it turns out when I made my shared parameter, my finger must have slipped on the keyboard and it looks like there was an extra space in my parameter name. So just be careful when you're typing shared parameters out. Um, but anyway, these ones should work now when I go to set them. So we're about to run and set these values to our doors that we have selected. So I'll run my script and we should get those warnings from our lists with our nulls. Um, but ultimately we should be able to set all the twos and the froms of our doors or all our selected doors. So now if I just cross check one of these, we should find that our two from fields are set. However, however, we will find some doors, such as this one here, that they have a two, but their from is no room. So maybe we wanna highlight these and sort of audit which ones are a problem. <clears throat> so what we're gonna look at is just a final script, which is gonna be just a modified version, essentially of this script. So we might actually just start with our current script as reference, I might just do a save as, and save over my third one called audit. And what I'll do is just delete some of these nodes. So essentially we're really just looking at these two nodes here. So current selection and door.rooms. So I'll just reopen my script so I can refresh my selection. And I'll just run my node again to get my twos and my froms. And I'll just do a select. I'll do a select previous just to get all my doors again. Okay, it looks like I can't get all my doors. What I might do is just quickly open script one uh, in order to select all my doors in my view. So I'll run. All my doors are now selected. I'll go back and whilst they're selected in the background, I'll run. 
And there we go. That's how easy it is to get your doors back again. What we care about here is our room count list. So essentially we, we get a, a number between zero and two. And essentially it just tells us whether it has a two plus a from, or just a two or a from, or neither a two or a from for zero. So what we're checking here is, is this number less than two? So what I'll do is just get a, I'll get a, I'll get a less than node. So we're checking if room count for each of these doors is less than two. And using this list, which will be a mixture of falses and trues, we're just going to use another filter by Boolean mask. And of our selected doors, we only want to look at the ones that are less than two, because these are the ones that are a problem or potentially a problem. So there you go. That really narrows down what we're looking at. And all we want to do is we want to do a graphic override. So we're just going to get a override in view node. And then we're also going to get some graphical overrides. So we'll connect those elements in there and we'll do override graphic settings by properties. So override graphic settings. Okay. I might just do a search for something. Oh, here, there we go. Override graphic settings by properties. And essentially this lets you override pretty much everything you could do in a standard visibility graphics override. And we don't want to hide the elements. So we'll just leave this set to false. What I'll do is just construct a color using ARGB or alpha red, green, blue. So alpha 255, 255 for red, 125 for green and zero for blue. We'll make it orange. Cool. And what we'll do is we'll just set this for all the, all the line weights and the fill colors. So cut fill, projection fill color, cut line color and projection line color. Um, you could also make the pattern solid if you wanted to. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it. And the only other thing we're going to do is we're going to set the line weight to something a bit thicker as well. So I'll just get a number node and I'll just set this to six for our cut and our, oh, sorry, our cut and our projection line weight so that it's a little bit beefier. Okay. And now if I run this script, it should override all the doors that have potentially a problem. So you can see here, we can see one of the doors here. We can see one of the doors there. In this case, it looks like they're all typically related to the outside of the, the building, which makes sense. However, if I go to say level three, I know that there's a room missing in the sample model by default. So if I just refresh this script by just reopening it and rerunning it, we'll see something quite interesting. So in this case, I do need to select all my doors. What I might do is just shortcut here by isolating category and just doing a selection. And I'll just reopen my script to refresh it. And we'll open Dynamo Player at the end just to do one single workflow. And I'll run my script. There's actually quite a few that don't have a room in this particular view, this whole corridor down the bottom, surprisingly. And it's because for some reason in the sample model, there's no room in this corridor. So quite surprising. Um, so as a result, we get a whole bunch of twos, but we get no from. Um, in this case, uh, we haven't set our twos and froms, but it doesn't matter because it's essentially reading the two from data from the clockwork node. Uh, so the last thing I'm going to do now is really just run the whole package uh, through Dynamo Player. So I'll just go to Manage tab and open Dynamo Player, and we'll just pick a new floor that we haven't looked at yet, and we'll do the three-part workflow to essentially audit or set all the parameters in the doors in that level. Because the way this script's built is you do it view by view. Um, you don't want to do the entire model all at once, ideally. Um, you could if you wanted to by going to a 3D view where you can see all your doors. Um, but I find that usually going a level at a time is pretty safe. It also controls the amount of elements that you're processing. So in this case, I've just saved it into this folder. And here's my three scripts in Dynamo Player. So I'll just go into level two and I'll zoom out so you can see the scripts working. And essentially they're one touch scripts. So they just require you to run them so it should select all the doors in my view. It'll take a little bit to run the first time because it's opening Dynamo in the background. Uh, but once it runs this one, the other two should be quite quick. So this one should run soon. Cool. So now I have all my doors selected. Let's push in their parameter values and let's audit them as well. So what we should have just done is pushed in our two from values, which we have. And also we should have audited 
any that don't have a to from. In this case, you can see actually all of them have a to from, which is great. So it doesn't really matter in this particular view. Um, I'm trying to think of how to get a view where it is a problem. I guess I could probably go in duplicate level three so that all the visibility graphic overrides are gone. Uh, okay, they're not gone. What I might do is just isolate category override graphic by element and I'll just reset visibility graphics. And because we're in Dynamo Player, the script will refresh every time. So I'll just run uh, the audit script in my active view. There you go, and now you can see it's reapplied that override to the ones that uh, don't don't have um, elements related to them. So quite convenient, and we can just push in the values as well. You can see how quick that was. And again, you can see to and from has been populated. So a really smooth and easy workflow that we're going to package into a toolbar in the next video that I release. Uh, so very exciting. But hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can work with the to and the from field uh, using Dynamo in Revit, or just how you can be more aware of the to from functionality in Revit. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for today. So just the start of a workflow that you could develop from here. Um, you could obviously use to and from in order to assess what all your door numbers should be in your entire project based on how many rooms go to how many doors go to a room and then you could number them all clockwise as subsets and you can essentially number every single door in your entire project using one script um, but it's a big script obviously so i probably won't do a tutorial on it um, but thanks for watching today and if you've got any comments or feed feedback feel free to leave it down below i try to make videos about two to three times a week um, and i hope to do so for a very long time so again if you're not already feeling this describing feel free to do so and feel free to share the channel and the content with other people if you think it'll help them and hopefully i'll see you in the next video Thanks. Take care. Bye.